and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and as you can see from our introduction, Class of 2021 graduation was earlier this week, and now what are the graduates going to do? Well, we have two very special graduates who are also normally crew, but, oh, little housekeeping first. Uh, we are not live this evening, so please do not call us. However, you can email me anytime, day or night, if you have a suggestion for a future topic. Thank you to those who have emailed me or stopped and let me know, but talk at bcattv.org is how you can get in touch with me. So there you go. Um, I would like to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for daddy date night. Hopefully homework's done and everything's good. Now, you may have noticed that normally I introduce my other wonderful crew for this evening, but this time you get to see them because they have graduated. Woohoo! So first up we have Jolie Atwood, Hello. who is a Burlington High School class of 2021 alumna. Yes, I am. <laughs> now what? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Yes. So thank you so much for your willingness to come in front of the camera again. And I cannot believe, I will try not to cry, but I can't believe you've been <laughs> volunteering for this show for six years. Yes, six years. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes, I guess a lot. <laughs> I don't even think, you know, usually like come high school, all the high school students end up doing other things yeah. and they kind of forget about BCAT. But you've done all these other things. Yes. and. You still do BCAT, I so I appreciate that. That is yeah. really cool. So you graduated. I did. Yes, you did. Um, what are your plans? Um, I will be going to the University of Connecticut in stores, um, oh. and I will be going for molecular and cellular biology. Oh, okay. That sounds very intense. <laughs> now, during your high school career, did you take like biology courses? Do they even offer microbiology? Not really. I'm more into like the genetic side of it. So I oh. took a genetics course in oh. um, okay. my sophomore year of school and I fell in love and I'm hoping to go more to that side of like molecular biology. Oh. Okay. And you just mentioned before we started recording that you have like an orientation tomorrow to kind of I figure do. out what you're doing. Yes, I have like a meeting with my uh, academic advisor. I hope that's virtual. Register for yeah, it is for like, classes. I don't think you want to drive down to Connecticut. Tomorrow. It's only an hour and a half, but oh, that's not bad. Yeah, it's really not. So, tell me a little bit more about your college search. I mean, you yes. you've, you decided upon mm -hmm. UConn, yes. but was that like the only place you wanted to go to? I mean, how do you, you know, I went to college a yes. long time ago. Mm -hmm. I actually had my 30th college reunion last weekend, which is <laughs> kind of scary. Um, but anyway, mm -hmm. um, how did you go about deciding what schools, you know, based on what they had for courses, distance, yeah. financial, I'm sure had something to do yeah. with it? It was a big part of it. Um, I ended up applying to seven schools. It was down from like 10 was like my original sort of I was going to apply to. Okay. And then That's sort a lot of, of essays to write. Yeah. On like sort of the trip to like actually doing them. I just, it was more like a, my mom would say like, would you rather go to like your safety school or this school? And it oh. was like, I, my safety school, like my base one was UMass Amherst. Okay. Um, where my mom went. So it was like, I would probably get in there so would I rather go there or like the other school and three oh, okay. of the schools were kind of like really. oh, okay. yeah <laughs> uh, so that's no, where they my really mom do call went. it that but. yeah they do <laughs> um so I did end up applying to seven and I got into four out of the seven Excellent. which was pretty good especially for this year was really tough and yeah. the three I didn't get into were my three reaches so it was just kind of okay so yeah. it wasn't mm -hmm. a total shock yes Okay. Unfortunately, my top school was one of those three mm. that I didn't get into. So that was probably the only school that I would have really gone to UConn above. Oh, but okay. I actually visited UConn in my freshman year for an honor band. Wow. And I'm in so so sophomore year. I don't remember which year, but I did it earlier. And it was the first college I actually visited that, like, I really liked. Like, oh, like okay. sort of that I did in my high school experience. Like, I had been to, like, other okay. college campuses for, like, other random events and stuff. But it was the first one that I went like during my high school years 
Okay. And I really liked it there. It was, I was more in the band aspect of it then because I went for a band, an honor band. Oh, and then we went again okay. for another band trip. So they and already have a, do they have a band there? They do. Oh. That's actually okay. one of the big reasons why I chose it is because they do have a marching band and I really, really wanted to do marching band. Well, yeah. Or just concert band in general, but marching band was just a big plus. And I've seen, um, this was freshman year. I went to visit sophomore year, but freshman year, we had a marching band competition and they performed there. And I remember watching like the whole marching band watch out, oh, walk out cool. onto the field. And there were so was many of them. Was it like a them. real field show and everything? Yes, and oh, they cool. like did like a really amazing show and stuff like that. And I remember watching it being like, wow, I, I want to do, do that in college. Yeah. And I'm literally going there. So Yay. it's a lot of fun, but yeah. Excellent. So. I feel like towards the end, it was kind of the only option. Like, we weeded out two of the schools I got okay. into, and we were between two for a while, but when it came down to, like, financials, and the other school didn't really have, like, a great music program. Like, oh, okay. And even though I'm not going for music, it's a really big part of my life, so that's what I wanted oh, to. Okay. That's you, sort of, like, my big extracurricular in college. Could you work in a double major, or is it just not worth it? I don't really have anything else I would really, like, double major as. Okay. Like, I, I was considering, like, Not my, that microbiology would yeah. be, you know. I was considering, or I still kind of am considering minoring in either chemistry or mathematics, because okay. I really like those two subjects. Okay. Um, But I'm not sure how much, like, now, I would ever like use it. genetics, would you have to go on to get a postgraduate degree or it kind of depends on like your experience and stuff that you get in college okay. so like obviously like internships and research um, work is a lot of the thing I'm actually another reason why I went why I decided UConn is they have a diagnostic genetic sciences like certificate thing Ooh, that you okay. can apply into after your sophomore year so I was also am I also looking into potentially doing that while I'm there and still then really early to decide yeah I mean, it's a let, little bit early let's find but... a roommate first you know? <laughs> yeah I haven't done that so no, do they I was always assigned a roommate, but again, this is the dark ages yeah. before email, but um, do do they assign you or do they, how, how do you figure um, out where you're going to live? And... I'm not really sure right now, actually. Okay. I filled out some housing application and I think there's another one coming out sometime okay. after my orientation that like you list like sort of some of your traits. So like, are you messy here? You're neat. How much do you sleep? <laughs> and then you can search up other roommates, like depending on like your preferences. Oh, and I guess okay. if you don't find someone by like a certain date, then they would randomly assign you. Oh, so okay. I will be looking more into that to figure out. I don't blame you because, yeah. you know, college dorm rooms really aren't huge. Yeah. And I'm very particular in how I like sleep. Okay. So that's my biggest concern because I like, I sleep is very important to me mm -hmm. and I also sleep between like a very specific window <laughs> and like only can sleep then. So like okay. I don't really nap very much so and I also have trouble falling asleep. So I want to find someone that has a similar sort of sleeping pattern span that I do. Got it. Well, we did talk about, um, you know, you graduated mm -hmm. and that you were involved in the marching band yes. during your high school career, mm -hmm. but Half of your high school career was very different. Yeah. How did that play into everything? Like, um, actually, let me look at my questions. Um, mm -hmm. How was your senior year different than the previous two and a half years? Yeah. It was definitely a lot different from a lot that we've been through, obviously once it was cut off in March I didn't get a lot of like my last concerts with like the senior class then mm. so we didn't have okay. a last concert there we didn't have like band banquets or anything I think the biggest thing that was affected was band because it was such a big part of my high school that now we can't we couldn't play indoors or anything but then it was like we didn't figure it out enough to have to be able to play outdoors at that point okay. so we didn't have a marching season this year and we didn't really have a concert band season until like January and even then we were with masks on and heavy mm. to part and we had to have it's a be hard playing with a yeah. mask, even though it's a special mask but it was really hard Ooh. but um we didn't we had like a virtual concert and all that stuff so I think that was probably the biggest thing that was affected okay besides like real like your academic classes and stuff and the fact that they were online was the fact that a lot of activities were canceled okay. or had to change and stuff in a way that like wasn't always super great. So like they did the best they could for BAM, right. but it was very difficult and kind of sad the fact that we didn't really get like the normal experience throughout. Now with the high school, 
Okay, mm -hmm. I'm still like a parent of elementary kids, yes. so it's hard for me to understand. Um, you were all issued iPads way back in the beginning of freshman year. Yeah. Well, we because had Chromebooks. a lot of the learning there was online electronically, mm -hmm. was it easy-ish to transition to a virtual learning experience? I definitely don't think it was as hard as it might have been if we didn't have stuff like that. Okay. Actually, the senior class had Chromebooks. We were the only ones that did. So honestly, it was probably better that we had Chromebooks this year. Like every other year, we were like, why do we have to have Chromebooks? We don't like them, but it was probably... <laughs> <laughs> Though a lot of people have pretty much given them up by now, but I feel like it was definitely the best thing that we had the Chromebooks because with the iPads it was really hard. Like with Chromebooks, you can like have um, split screen and stuff like oh, that. Oh, cool. So it was definitely something that helped us. Um, but yeah, I would say a lot of like different learning tactics and stuff were changed. Okay. And definitely not as much paper, which is not always a bad thing, but it was a lot harder to do some things. Like yeah. Sometimes I just you know my no I I need yeah. like something tangible yeah um, what is okay we've already established that this senior year was pretty much like no other yeah but considering that what was your favorite memory of senior year that you're like oh my gosh I'm always gonna remember this good or bad I don't really well know. yeah let's start with the good <laughs> I mean, there are a few different things. Like, my last band concert was pretty fun. We actually had it in person a few weeks ago. Was that, like, outside? Yeah, it was outside, but we were, like, 10 feet apart, and it was just really funny because none of us expected it, but it was so cold that night <gasps> that we were all, like, shivering and stuff. Oh, and no. Wearing jackets. Like, we were all dressed nicely and then, like, piling on, like, our band jackets Layers. and stuff because it was so cold. Um, Did the trombone I, slides freeze? I don't think so. Okay. But I played in the musical that was also outside recently. It was Fun. Only, only ended two weeks ago. Um, but so that was an adventure, trying to learn all the music. Yeah. We only got it like a week before. So there was all that. Um, and then some of the events that just occurred in this past week where like we had senior events like the Night of the Stars where you just got to hang out with your friends. Okay. And we could do it without masks on because of the restrictions were mostly lifted by then. Okay. So no, it was actually a lot of the memories that I have are from later in the school year when things were more back to normal. Well, things, st yeah, exactly. The, the regulations started. Yeah. Now, did they require, did the schools require you to get vaccinated or was it just like strongly recommended and personal choice? Or? I never heard anything about the high school like um, requiring you to get vaccinated. Um, I know a lot of people's workplaces did. I don't, I never really worked, okay. so I wasn't required. Though I know my school, UConn in the fall, is requiring people to get okay. vaccinated. But, so I am fully vaccinated at this point. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the um, prom alternate. The Night Under the Stars. The Night Under the Stars. Were there I, stars, first of I all? I actually had a lot of fun there. Again, it was sad that it wasn't a normal prom. Were there stars? But or was it no. overcast? <laughs> it was pretty much cloudy. Um, but I actually had a lot of fun for what they gave us. Did you dress had, up or did you just go casual? No, I went kind of casual. Um, we had pressed catering, which was nice. So it was, it was really, I mean, had mac and cheese. Um, <laughs> And yeah, but I didn't think there was anything better than Panera mac and cheese. Was press mac press and cheese mac pretty and cheese good? Press mac and cheese is really good, too. Um, you have to Did like a lot alternate of... between, because like sometimes you get sick of Panera yeah. and sometimes you get sick of press, so you got to have a good a good alternate. Um, but they Did had everybody go? Were there drawing. a lot of people there? Yeah, there were a pretty good amount of people there. Okay. Um, there was character drawings, so Ooh. for free, too, so I got one. I was the first person there, actually, <laughs> so I went right up and was like, hey, I want to get my drawing done. So I got that, and I'm playing the clarinet. Did it come out good? Oh, oh. It was oh, pretty good. Yeah, fun. it's hanging up in my room now. Um, I think the big thing of the night was they had blackjack tables. <gasps> really? They were so much fun. We were there for, like, the entire, like, two hours. I don't that think I know how to play was. blackjack. Oh, we didn't either. Okay. Me and my group of friends, we had our like, little table, and we were learning throughout the night, and it was so much and fun. And instead of poker chips, you used M&Ms or something. They gave us fake, they gave us like a fake uh, $1,000 bill at the beginning Ooh. that we handed in for okay. $10, $100 chips, and then that's basically what we were betting with, but then obviously okay. we couldn't keep the chips, so we had to give them back at the end. But, um, so it was kind of fake money. We weren't gambling our own money. Okay. So. We weren't really gambling real money at all. So Though there yeah. were a lot of jokes it about that. It wasn't like your away. college tuition was at no. stake. Yeah, there were a lot of jokes about that. Sure there were. Yeah. We don't need to repeat them. This is a family show. <laughs> and then yeah. what about graduation itself? 
I think graduation was definitely as close to what it would have been normally, like, as it could be. Um, it was definitely different because we had our parents on the field with us. Or, like, it depends on the parents. You had two, You could have two guests sit on the field with you, oh, and then everyone okay. else could sit in the stands. What was normal, like, pre-pandemic? Everyone would just, like, all the guests would sit in the stands. So that you didn't have, like, your guests with you oh, on the field. Oh, okay, so it was we just, like, the... Up. The seniors on the field and everybody yeah. else in the stands. Oh. Yeah, and like the teachers mm. and the band were on the field, and then all the guests okay. were in the stands. But this year, they made it so that there was going to be less people in the stands. Uh, for like social distancing. Yeah. So now were you still limited? Were how many tickets? Were... I don't think so. It was first come first serve. Oh. I wasn't okay. really paying attention to if anyone was actually social distance in the stands, but it didn't. The restrictions were. Well, it was outside more yeah. now. And, um, but yeah, so my parents were sitting behind me the whole time, which was kind of funny. Oh, wait, um, were you in, was the band playing? The band was playing. It was only the wind ensemble okay, that was playing. Okay, which would be you. Yes, I was in the wind okay. ensemble, but because we're seniors, we didn't play. Um, because oh, we were in our cups okay. and gowns. But, um, so normally it would be like the entire sort of high school band program would go, which okay. included the symphonic band, but they could, didn't really have enough room on the field. Um, so they only had the wind ensemble. Oh. So it was a bit quieter, but it still worked out. And it was fun. So if there was, you know, going back to like senior year, mm -hmm. if there was, okay, barring losing the pandemic, if there was <laughs> one thing that you could change or do differently, do you know what that would be? I definitely think I probably would have tried to stay in contact with more of my friends over the pandemic. I mean, at the beginning we were like, oh, it's not really that big of a deal. And then over the summer there was a lot more hanging out, but I feel like once it got to the school year, it just became like less and less. So like, I know there were a lot of people that I didn't really stay in contact with that oh, much. So okay. it was almost kind of like preparation for what's probably gonna happen when we go to college. Like who will you stay in contact and right. who will you kind of not? Okay. So it it kind of helps me learn like who is worth sort of keeping yeah. in contact with, but at the same time, it was really kind of was sad that we didn't get to hang out with as many yeah. people for like our senior year, because like that's the time to like really hang out with your friends. And we all have cars now, so we all could have gone places, oh, but we couldn't. Cars? No, do you really have your own car? Uh, no, I share my mom's car. Okay. But, yeah, that's what I had to do. So yeah. I'm just like. But since the pandemic started, no one's really leaving the house, so we always have an extra well, car. Well, that's true. Well, that's why you got a puppy. Yes, I did get a puppy. Was was your puppy a pandemic puppy? I don't remember. She is a pandemic puppy. <laughs> okay. A lot of people are getting yeah, pandemic puppies. Yeah, we got her in July. Oh, okay. It was either June or July. I don't remember. Okay. So it's around a year-ish. Yes. She was born okay. in May, so she's already one years old. Wow. She is very clingy. <laughs> She's a puppy. Yeah. I know. It's like, you know, we have cats too. And it's like the cats are like totally freaking out because yeah. the kids were home all the time. You know, my daughter was mm -hmm. hybrid. And yeah. so she was home five days and gone too. Mm -hmm. And the cats are like, wait, where'd she go? She's not here anymore. She, she, so what happened? <laughs> yeah, my other dog, because um, I have the two dogs. I have my new dog, sort of the pandemic puppy. Okay. And I have my old dog, Sophie, who we've had for, she's almost nine, I think now. And she's never, I've never been her favorite. I can admit that. I don't let her on my bed, which was the problem. That's probably, yeah, exactly. It was like the only thing is that I didn't really like her on my bed, but because of the school year started being online and stuff and I was at home for the entire time and she got super attached to me because my other, my older sister was at college and my um, twin sister had full in-person oh, okay. learning. Although like it was kind of funky. Um, for it was her, weird. But. Yeah, it was weird. But so, um, my old dog would like came so attached to me during that time, and it was so weird because she never like really like loved me beforehand. <laughs> but again, I let her on my bed now because it was like whatever, and she was really cute in the background <laughs> of all my Zoom classes. Yeah, I think a lot of teachers are like they know everybody who has a pet now. Oh yeah. So Especially maybe not. my new puppy, I would show her all the time because yeah. she, so, she would sit on my lap during class. Looking, not looking back at senior year, but you are ready to kind of move out. I mean, <laughs> I know it sounds kind of scary, and in four years you'll probably move back in and the dog will still be on your bed. Yes. Um, but looking back at the past 13 years, from kindergarten up, um, I know if you can remember back to anything <laughs> that happened in kindergarten, 
what were some of your favorite memories? Oh, I don't really know. When did you start taking an instrument? When did um, you start? Fourth grade. Fourth grade, okay. I do remember a few of the first classes because I remember for a while because the clarinet has like a reed yeah. and like oh, a I funky can never do a reed. and a mouthpiece. So like we only would practice with the mouthpiece for the first few weeks. <laughs> you sound like a duck or something. Yeah, it was really weird. Um, there are a few funny memories of people because they had, we had cork grease sticks that would put on the cork oh, yep, to help uh -huh. it. And some people would be like, hey, can I use this as chapstick? Or can I use chapstick on my thing? Because it was in the shape of chapstick. Oh, and okay. um, Miss Gender and the band teacher would be like, no, definitely not. No. Like, that's such a bad idea. You can't do that. Um, well, yeah, I wouldn't want to use the cork stuff on my lips. But yeah, no. you couldn't do it the other way around? No. That didn't work? Okay. No, did not work. Um, but yeah. Now, what were some of the... Uh, other activities you know band did play a big part in your life mm -hmm. did you ever, and b cat obviously B -cat. thank you um <laughs> were there any other like activities that you enjoyed at any point like did you ever play sports or i kind of danced around a lot i'm okay. definitely not the most athletic i tried for a while did not really <laughs> succeed i did gymnastics Hi. for a yeah. long span I did track for a little while and okay. like softball. I met Liz through track, so oh, okay. that was kind of fun. But I'm not very athletic. I don't have the ambition to do it. I'm more school-oriented. So I definitely didn't really do that. And again, band and like BCAT were just such big parts that it was kind of that. I uh, I had a lot of different activities where I would help like special needs kids. So I did okay. um, Special Olympics for a little while where I volunteered as a gymnastics oh, coach because my funny. whole family okay. is sort of in gymnastics, so I knew a lot of stuff. Um, I joined the Pals Club during high okay. school, which was working with the kids in the lab program. Okay. Because that's what my sister was in, so it was kind of okay. a nice tie-in. But that was kind of it. I that didn't really it. do. I did other stuff, but like nothing super monumental, I would say. What are you looking forward to most about college? I'm excited to sort of make new friends and sort of not make a new personality for myself. But I feel like there's only so much you can like grow in high school, especially with like all those other years that you have behind you that people okay. still knew you from. Okay. And like I feel like I've grown so much in high school, but it's not always reflected in how other people see me at high school okay. because you're like typecasted kind. Yeah, because they like they know you from like when you're super young, and so it's not always. Remember in third grade when? Yeah, kind of like that. So I'm super excited to go to college and not reinvent myself, but just show everyone who I am now without right. them knowing. Kind of like start fresh. Yeah, kind of like that, and obviously making new friends. Now. Making new friends is always a good thing, yes. but you know, not thinking about the Girl Scout song being new friends. But <laughs> are there student or are do you have a lot of friends here that you really, really want to keep in contact with? I wouldn't say I have like so many friends. Like I definitely have a good like ten people maybe that I definitely want to keep in contact with. That my sh list might shorten as the years go on, and I just find who is gonna best fit me and like that kind of thing. I want to stay in contact with Liz and like a few of my other really, really good friends and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I do have, I never really had like an expansive friend right, group to yeah. begin with. My friend groups are already pretty small and I have the people that I'm really, really close with. So I think definitely I only all had like two people. people that I wanted to stay in contact yeah. with. And it's funny because I finally went to like my 10 year reunion and I went with my best friend and mm -hmm. we're looking around going, Okay, there's a couple sitting at that table. One of them went to high school with us. Which, Which one? one? <laughs> <laughs> but how, you know, um, how do you think it will, more about, um, oh, I don't know. Um, what will you miss most about leaving Burlington? I think our town is just pretty great in general. I think that we have a good community that's really not geared towards children, but it's very, loving and caring family and friendly. welcoming family friendly like we have so many parks and we have like really good pretty good school system and things like that i think i'll miss that when like summer concerts yeah. well you'll be home for the summer so you can do those yes i can still do those yay well i do have a little thank you gift for you mm -hmm. that okay. you don't have to open the card now okay but hopefully i can squeeze the uh, send this over 
while I'm lat linked attached oh, to my leash. Attached. So if you want to open it now, All you right. can open it now. And my daughter helped me pick out the bag, so you know. She said you were a polka dot type of person. So Smith College, because you went there. I went to Smith College. So I decided to get you a sweatshirt. So Thank one, you. when you wear the Smith College sweatshirt, you will remember me. <laughs> and also, when I was in college, I loved collecting sweatshirts from all these yeah. other schools. So I don't know if you ever mm -hmm. want or have that desire, but that can start your collection. My sister does that with all of her best friends. She has all of their college sweatshirts. Fun! Thank you so much. So, I'll right. have to get you a UConn sweatshirt. Oh, yeah. Not now, it. but you know, eventually, you know. <laughs> but we are ready to do a little switch. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. I hope you stick around for at least the summer and come back, you know, Christmas vacation and, you know, summer vacations and, and yes. we can do I'll coffee or something. Yeah. <laughs> Play video games with my, with my kid. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see. I think we have a very special picture. Yes. Oh, you might recognize some of those picture. people. <laughs> And through the wonders of television, we are back. I hope you recognized a couple of those wonderful people. It looked like a fun, sunny day. And now we have another Burlington High School alum. That's going to sound weird saying that. Right? You're not a senior anymore. Nope. You're an alumna. I'm out of the school. You are it's crazy. Done. Well, thank you, Liz. Of course. Everybody, this is Liz. Hi. I hope you know Liz. Um, you have been volunteering for BCAT, specifically this show, for five years. Five years. So, quick, wow. quick little fun story. Okay. So, as you know, I did my internship here at BCAT. That was like just recently, yep. though. Yep, for the month okay. of May, I was here for my internship. And one of the final projects that I had to do as part of my internship for to get a passing, like I passed my a internship passing, for credit. Right. Yeah. So you could graduate. Yeah, to get my, to graduate, of course. <laughs> was I had to create a little short video essay and to kind of like add a little like emotional part to it I went through the something to talk about YouTube page and I scrolled all the way back to 2016 to okay. one of the first shows that I was ever announced on and I included that in my video essay. Oh wow! Oh! I'm touched! I'm not gonna cry. I don't know if it was cry. my official first one because I don't remember which one was my first. Yeah, it right. was shortly before 100. I know that. Oh, okay. But it was uh, in 2016, late 2016. Wow. Yep. That is so cool. So obviously you passed because you graduated. I did. And did you get a diploma? I did. It's in okay. my house. It's all mine. <laughs> cool. Did you know, well, okay, another little trivia fact. When I graduated, I got someone else's diploma. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a tradition at my at, at college where they originally, you know, when the, the school started, mm -hmm. you know, long, long, long time ago, they wanted you to have the opportunity to meet every person in your class before you left. Hmm. So they gave you somebody else's diploma. Oh. And after graduation, you had to go around and start swapping diplomas with everybody until you found yours. Oh, so now, now it's just a diploma circle. They form like lots of concentric circles Ooh. and you just start handing diplomas by until you see <laughs> one with your name on it and they're like, oh, that's me. And then you oh, step out of the name. circle. Oh, that's my name, no way. <laughs> and then, you know, the circle slowly gets smaller. But I like that. That sounds really chaotic though. <gasps> oh, it is, but it's fun. And I'm it's, sure. You know, it's one of those traditions. Yeah, of course. So, like we mentioned, you know, college, high school, traditions you are moving on onward and upward um what are your plans not like for tomorrow morning but you know i'm having in, breakfast having morning. breakfast yep. okay you probably sleep in until 10 but hopefully no what are your your longer term so in the fall i plan to move across the country <gasps> And I'm going to the University of California, Davis. Woohoo! Very exciting. And I'm going for biomedical engineering. <laughs> wow, you and Jolie are like both really smart. <laughs> we're yeah, we're both going for really big, big majors as well. Yeah. You know, I majored in psychology. My sister majored mm -hmm. in um, 
anthropology. Nice. And, you know, when we were growing up, we watched, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the show, Family Ties. Yes, I have heard And of it. Alex P. Keaton, played by Michael J. Fox, yep. um, made a comment on one of the episodes where, oh, you're going to major in one of those made-up majors like anthropology or <laughs> psychology. So my brother quoted that. Like, nice. My entire... Every time I, I think of anthropology, I think of the second season of Community, where they're just like, what class should we all take together now that we've uh, finished Spanish? Anthropology? 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Same thing. So, okay, okay, so you're majoring in biomedical engineering. Yes. How, how do you know that you, that's what you want to do? I mean, how did you get introduced to that topic so or that subject? For me, that kind of started with um, kind of narrowing down. Do I want to go for a more liberal arts idea or do I want to go for a more math and science idea? And right off the bat, I knew that I was going for something more math and science related because that's definitely more where my brain goes. Okay. But it was, I kind of wanted to apply them to something more of just like actually hands on, like some okay. more like lab worky type stuff. Instead of like math. As opposed to like sitting at a table and doing math all day. Right. How can I like use math and science to do something a little bit more interesting? Hmm. Okay. Which is how I kind of got introduced to the idea of engineer engineering where it's you taking those concepts and you're doing something more it's with like it. Practical. Yeah. You're using okay. your hands, you're doing some, you're applying it to do stuff. And throughout high school, a very common theme was I loved my biology classes. Ooh, Those were always okay. the best science classes to take. Um, my freshman year teacher, Mr. Russ, my favorite teacher I've ever had in high school. Absolute standout guy. His class was phenomenal. Now, you just hurt the feelings of all your other high school teachers. I love you, you all, too. You're all great. <laughs> But, he, but was, he, he stood out. But okay. he was always like the one guy that like, you always were excited to go to his class. It was oh, never, oh, I'm going to biology now. It's, <gasps> yes, I'm going to biology now. Cool. And so I, I knew that I wanted to go to something bio as well. Okay. And so I kind of debated between going into either bioengineering or going into biotechnology. Because I wasn't sure what like the okay. difference between the two of yeah, them was. I wouldn't know what the difference would be. Um, but in AP biology, I kind of got introduced to more of what biotechnology was and it's a lot of like genetic sequencing oh okay. which is really cool but then I kind of was like I like it but it's not a hundred percent what I'm looking for okay so then I kind of was like okay so maybe I'll look into bioengineering a little bit more mm. and biomedical engineering is kind of more the practices of like creating technology to develop the biology and medical fields oh, cool. and I was like that's the one Wow. Or at least as of right now, as, of right as now. an 18-year-old that's going, that thinks they know what they're doing, yeah. that's what, like, is it's sparking my interest right now. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, see, I didn't have that little spark, so that's probably why, you know. A lot of it was, like, narrowing down, okay, so I know that I like this, how can okay. I, like, narrow it down even further until okay. I kind of, like, get the thing that kind of is, like, okay. And it's also cool that you were also, like, oh, that's cool, but... I don't want to do that. Yeah, so exactly. So let's look over here and, yeah. oh, I'm not sure about that. Oh, but this is, you know. A lot of it's like, tra but also it's not like I'm against liberal arts stuff. Like, I right. love film stuff as so much. Yeah. Like, I'm probably at some point going to try to do a film minor or like Ooh, some sort of okay. thing like that because I like, like, you know, I've spent now, a lot does, of time here. I've yeah. spent a lot of time thinking about movies. I made my senior project documentary about movies throughout the years. So a lot of kind of that kind of stuff interests me as well, but in a like, a different way so I figured okay. that as like a career path so the left brain going right the, brain yeah thing. exactly okay. they kind of bounce back and forth and so I figured as a career going into the biomedical side of things would be really interesting but you maybe we'll add a little bit of film the in there artistic as well. stuff exactly that's a hobby got it but you're also really involved in sports yes I am that's so, been a huge thing for me like how I know you're really into volleyball yes you I've been, strike me as being a field hockey person, but I don't know that for sure. I am not. You're not? Okay. Volley I just know volleyball. What else? Uh, I am also uh, on the tennis team. Oh, Those are my okay. two sports that I'm involved in directly. Got it. Um, I've been with both volleyball and tennis for all four years of high school. Wow. Um, I, for volleyball, I was on the JV team for my freshman and sophomore years. I was the only freshman on JV my freshman year. Um, and then I made varsity my junior year. And I played Excellent. both my junior and senior years, and they were all a lot of fun. Wow. And then for tennis, um, right off the bat, since I've 
interestingly enough, I was actually talking to Chris about this earlier. I started playing tennis when I was six years old. Really? Yes. Um, and I'm 18 right now, which means that I've been playing for 12 two years. Third, yeah, two thirds That's of your two life. That's two thirds of my life. Yeah. I've dedicated a lot of time and energy to being in tennis. And but do you like it? Yes. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it today in 95 degree heat. Mm, no, but, I would advise um, against that. Yeah, but generally, I ge- but you still enjoy love the game. tennis. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm captain of the team. Um, I've been on varsity for all four years. Oh, um, wow. I've been a varsity singles player for all four years. Okay. So with tennis, tennis, it's either singles or doubles, right? Yes. Okay. So on a tennis lineup, your top three players are your three singles players, and then your, you have two lines of doubles for your varsity games. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you have any plans on continuing these sports, or do you think you might want to do a different sport, or so, you know, do you still want to stay have that athletic hobby? Yes, one hundred percent. Not like I love the sports as well, and um, one of the things that has kept me going with them is that they're my main form of exercise. Okay. And so, if I don't play them in college as well then I'll probably fall behind. You will definitely exercise. gain the freshman 15. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm already mentally preparing for that. <laughs> but, All righty um, then. <laughs> but um, I don't think I'll play for a varsity team um, okay. in college. Um, I'm already moving all the way across the country. There's, I need some time to like figure Adjust. out what I'm doing, get yeah. some adjustments. Culture shock. Exactly. Kind of. Before I just say, all right, I'm now I'm now walking onto a varsity team. I've got to devote all my time to that as well. Yeah. So and biomedical engineering. Exactly. It's yeah. I'm already throwing myself in with a lot of stuff. I don't You're already throwing yourself that, in right? front of the bus, dude. You know, <laughs> exactly. hey. Exactly. So um, I'll probably join a club team. Okay. I don't know if I'll do that like right when I get there. No, probably or like later sophomore on, year. But at some point, I will definitely join a team. And even, like, both of these sports are very easy to play recreationally. Like, cool. tennis, you just got to find one other person that likes playing tennis. You That's can just true. go book a court, and then you can go hit for an hour. That and works. there you go. And for volleyball, I really love beach volleyball as well. And moving to California, you've got some better weather for beach volleyball, so you're not, like, locked yeah, into but playing during one UC season. Davis is kind of up north in California. It is it? more north. And, but even though they do have, like, a winter period... Like, it's not as it's bad. It's not as... nearly as long. First of all, there's no snow, so that Ooh, helps a lot. Yeah. Um, even, and if I do miss the snow, Lake Tahoe is like an hour away drive. Okay. So, I I still have some snow in my life. That I'm works. not totally okay. dropping that. But um, their winter season is so much shorter. Um, like even if you're there in February, it's seventy. Cool. Something well, no, along those really lines. not really cool. It's actually it's the opposite warm. of cool. In fact. Exactly. But it's still along those lines. So it's, you can still go out and find a couple other friends that want to play beach volleyball with you. There you go. And you can just go have fun. Sweet. Perfect. And that will also help counteract the freshman 15 because you have to look good in a bathing suit year Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's, let's bring it back to the East Coast here. Yeah. And back to Burlington. Back mm-hmm. to Burlington and back to your senior year. Yes. You know, um, I was kind of talking with Jolie about your senior year is kind of unprecedented definitely um how was that adjustment you know either academically socially psychologically how how did you adjust to this is not a normal yeah. senior year i think the only way to describe this this year is weird like, there's no other word that okay. describes it better than just weird. <laughs> I think you could throw funky in, but... Funky's weird. a good word, too. Funky's a good word for it, but I think just weird. Like, okay. there's some days where you're like, all right, I got to get out of bed. I got to get dressed. Um, I'm really... I got to go into school. I'm ready to go do something. And then you're in a room with four other people. <laughs> and they're all, like, six feet apart from you. Uh-huh. And so... Your only friend in English class, you're texting because you don't want to yell across the room to him because you're you're, you're gonna not be supposed hurt. to be texting during school. Yeah, but like you got to talk to your you're trying okay. to talk to your friend because it's the only way you can be social. Well, anymore. we're like six feet apart here, and we're yelling at each other. You're right. That Point is, taken. <laughs> but at the you also got a teacher right in front of you, so you don't want to yell weird things in front of them. Well, that's true. 
<laughs> and it's kind of hard to pass notes. Oh, well, wait, you have text. Okay. That is my. We used to we used notes. to fold paper up into like little yep. tiny triangles, and you know. Oh, you got to play like flag or like, like little like little paper table football. football. With them? Yeah, that's how we used to pass football. notes. I love that. So, <laughs> texting takes away the fun of paper football. Okay, so this but year was weird. It's, it's re and then there's other days where you're at home, you haven't gotten dressed, you ate breakfast like two seconds ago, you just came straight from finishing a bowl of cereal, and now you're sitting in front of a computer with your camera off, about and to fall doing asleep. Calculus. Yeah, trying your hardest to listen to calculus despite having zero motivation to oh. do it. Um, some days it was easier to listen because you're in the right mindset. Other days you're like, I want nothing more than to go back to bed and I'm at home, so why can't I just go do that? Exactly. So all, no matter what, I think no matter what the situation you're in, it's like, okay, what am I doing here? Yeah. What, what am I doing next? It's not like you're planning for the entire week. You're just kind of trying to plan for like, Survival the next mode. hour. Yeah. Almost like a survival thing. Yeah, it's kind like, of. Let me get through this next. Yeah. Now, do you think that weirdness helped with, or you think that some of the tools that you learned over this past year will help you in your transition to college? Because you're not going to have the parent kicking you out of bed saying you got to yep. catch the school bus. I think a lot of this year has kind of given you a sense of or one of the things that I should say that this year has done for me in particular is I, in the past, have been miserably bad at time management and scheduling. Jolie can vouch for me on this. <laughs> I'm the, I'm late to everything. I don't okay. know what I'm doing half the time. Okay. I've always been on time for your show, though. I promise. Yes, you have. <laughs> but I'm always so bad at because Jolie management. pokes you. She texts you. Where are you? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> In mid fun fact, in middle school, anytime I would show up two minutes late to something, I would get at least 10 texts from Jolie going, where are you, where are you, where are you, where are you, where are you? But um, She has the time management thing master. Yeah, no, she knows what she's doing. I don't. <laughs> That's why we love her. Exactly. We balance each other out like that. There you go. But in the case of, all right, I'm at home, and my parents are dealing with their own things that they got to do today. So I got to figure out, all right, so I'm, I'm at home. I got to do this class at this time. All right, I, I've, like, mastered the art of setting alarms at the right time this uh, year. Okay. Like, I know exactly when to set the alarms for, all right, you're going to draw, like, you're going to leave your house for an hour. All right, so you have, so you got to set your alarm for this is when you have to go get ready to do that. This is the time that your class is starting. So it's, you always set alarms knowing, all right, you're going to be in class in five minutes. Okay. Here's how you know. And especially, weirdly enough, for me, the hardest month was the month of May. Did you Which, get senior brain? I had absolute senior brain. I was still doing two AP classes preparing <gasps> for the AP exam. I was doing my internship here at BCAT. I had the tennis no, team that's that like I had the to opposite deal with. of senior brain. Senior brain no, is like <laughs> but, so my brain is going on shutdown okay. mode, but I'm put, picking up more stuff. things at the same time. Oh no! So I'm do I'm doing these classes. I'm doing my internship. I'm doing my tennis team. I'm doing um, my job, like my actual outside of all of this job. <laughs> my real job. Yeah, yeah. my real job. Um, I was doing other like senior events that were trying to wow. like happen. Oh, man. It was just like every hour it'd be like, oh my God, I have to be somewhere in the next 10 <laughs> I minutes. I can't do this anymore. Did you have like a meltdown? I would have had a meltdown. Yes. Um, I would have just sat in my, my room. My first and, meltdown you know. was at the beginning of the month. And that was when I was like, all right, get it together. I was driving to my match in Wilmington and I got struck, stuck in the worst traffic and I made everyone late for the match by 15 minutes because I couldn't get there on time. Oh no. I left slightly late from my internship because I was helping. Oh, two minutes is like I, everything. And especially in the student parking lot, it's, you can't oh. leave. Like once, if once you're stuck behind cars, no one's letting you in. You're stuck. Yeah. And I parked at a weird time, at like a weird place, so like I couldn't get out. Oh no. Out. So I was stuck. The, I was, the latest I was supposed to be there was 345. I wasn't even close at 345. Like I was like not even in Wilmington at that point. Oh no. I'm sitting in my car. I'm calling my mom. I'm like, ah! I'm like freaking oh, out. 
I'm going into full on panic mode. I'm changing my clothes while like while I'm just stopped. <laughs> oh, my brother still does that. Yeah, no, like it's, since it would be like you move an inch every like two minutes. So I was just like, all right, I can change right now. I'm not moving. Just don't drive a standard transmission car. It's a lot more challenging. <laughs> okay, good, good, nice advice. But I wasn't, I was just full on like, I didn't cry, but I was screaming. Oh, I would have. <laughs> I was on the brink of tears. Oh, no. Because I knew that I had to be at a match, and I wasn't, I wasn't ready to, like, clean my face off. I was just like, oh, my God, I'm freaking out. But that was, like, at the beginning of the month. And so for the rest of the month, it was, okay, I have to leave by this time. I have to eat at this time. I have to just make sure that I, at that point, I was just like, all right, be the first one there. Leave. Uh -huh. You got to leave early. Okay. Make, and I got into a habit. So it of, kind of like scared you into. Yeah, it was kind yeah. of like fear. It was fear factor. I needed to like get myself yeah, together. Okay. Um. It, I got into a habit of like I, I was leaving at like three o five. I needed to leave at two fifty because the bell for the school rings at two fifty five. Oh. I needed to beat everyone out of the parking lot. Ah. That did was it work. The, that was the first thing I needed to get out, get out of here before everyone else did, and that was kind of what made the difference. Oh, it was okay. knowing what. When I had to be there, how long it took me to get there. That is a good life other, skill. Exactly. And so, especially knowing all of that, figuring that out myself, going to college, it's like, okay, I have to be at this place at this time, and here's how long it takes to get here, and here's any backup that you could mm -hmm. possibly face in the meantime. Exactly. And if I have to leave at this time, yep. it'll take me this long. If I leave three minutes later, it's going to take me this long. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I've got this assignment due at this time, and here's my open period to do it. Do it in this time. Excellent. So you did learn time So management. I really did learn something over, over this whole time. So you just had, like, senior events and mm -hmm. everything. Yep. And what was your take on, like, the was it Night Under the Stars? The Night Under the Stars event, yeah. yeah. I thought it was really fun. The event formerly known as prom. <laughs> did you dress up or did you go cash? I didn't. I went, um, most of us wore college gear. So I wore my Davis sweatshirt. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, now, did you actually go out to UC Davis to like look at the college? Yes, I have been there. I have been on the campus. I've looked, I didn't take an official tour because okay. I couldn't get back there in time to do that. Okay. But um, fun fact, I toured the Northeastern campus um, the week that shutdown happened. <gasps> wow. Yep, it was Monday before the Thursday that we got wow. the call staying home. Wow. Yep. That's cutting it close. Yeah. All right, back to but, Night um, Under the Stars. I was at UC Davis in December of 2019. Okay. My parents and I drove around. We walked around. We saw the town of Davis outside of it, and we really thought it was really cute. Um, we went around the campus and thought, this looks like a really nice place. We saw the dorms, and I took a virtual tour when I was okay. at home. Not the same. Which isn't the same, but it kind of shows you kind of some of the aspects that you missed. Okay. Um, beforehand. I just keep thinking of like the real like, estate videos when you go to buy the house and you're like, oh, that's a pretty house, beautiful yard. And then you go there yeah, and, then it's you're like, there and it's like, okay, this is a, this is a dumpster fire. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so you're familiar with the I campus am familiar and you can with kind of campus. picture yourself I know, there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, when it came to uh, moving to California, there was one other school that was competing with Davis for a very long time. Okay. And right towards the end, right when I was about to make my decision, a lot of the things started going against the other school that I was looking at. Okay. And things just kept going up for Davis because they had all of the now, things. Now, were you that they still were trying for. to decide, or was it just like coincidental, like the whole, you know? Um, it was a little bit of both. So I made my decision somewhat early. I made my decision okay. towards the beginning of April. Oh, okay. But that was because the other school that I was looking at. Their housing application like opened up on like the first week of April. Wow. Like you okay. got your decision letter pretty early. So it was like, all right, you've had some time to think if that's the school you want to go to. So here's your housing application. It opens on this date. So I needed wow. to make my decision if I was going there okay. early so that I could do the housing preference. Seems kind of a lot of extra pressure and stress. It kind of is. And that's what forced me to make my decision early. Okay. And when it came down to it, there was several things about the other school that was making me make that decision that was kind of like, I don't know if that's kind of what I'm looking yeah. for. There was, um, and there's two like really big things that made okay. me make my decision that that wasn't the school for me. First of all, it was a tech school. So it was like, 
you're going into biomedical engineering, and if you want to transfer out, good luck. Oh, okay. So it was kind of, I decided that... You were going to get stuck yeah, in that track, was, whether you liked it or not. You're stuck in that track, okay. and if you want to change, do something else. You'd have, you to, have to... You have to fill out, like, the super long process to transfer in the first place, and then once you transfer, you're behind everyone else because you missed a year. Okay. Which... That's kind of scary. Right? Especially, especially with tuition costs the way it is. Yeah, <laughs> especially as just like an 18-year-old who yeah. thinks they know what they're doing, but is still like, I've, I'm pretty sure. It's been sure. a long time since I was 18, and I still don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. It's like, so, okay, that's a little too much pressure to really think I know what I'm doing right off the bat. And the other thing about it was, that was in Central California, the other okay. school. But Davis was in Northern California, like I've said. Most of my family's from Northern California. Oh, okay. So that's kind of why you were looking at the West Coast to begin with. Yeah. Most of my mom's family is from California. My mom went to school in California. My dad went to school in California, even though he is from here in New England. Okay. He's actually from Boston. So um, even all my parents went out there, my family's out there. So it didn't feel like it was like too much of a stretch for me to okay. go there. And the thing about Davis was... It was close to a bunch of my family members. It was like an hour away. Oh, yeah. My aunt drives like through the Davis area a lot because she has a place in Tahoe that she likes that she um, that she owns so that she goes to okay. um, all the time. And so she was like, "If you ever get homesick, we stop through Davis and we can take you to Tahoe." And right. it, not not like trips to Tahoe. That's not like right. the reason I chose it. But like the idea of but having family, having exactly, that network, having the idea of having that support. I'm moving across the country away from my yeah. parents. I'm moving 3000 miles away. I'm moving 3000 miles away. And if I'm moving to Southern California, where it's impossible to, for me to visit anybody, that's kind of difficult. You're up a tree without a paddle. Exactly. Yeah. So if I'm moving to Northern California and okay. I know that I have a support system, if I yeah. ever need one, that's really important. Okay, so we started talking about evening yeah, under the stars. Yeah, back to like the Burlington So you're, you're stuff. wearing your UC Davis yep, stuff. Yeah, I was wearing my Davis sweatshirt. Um, there was a lot of games. Um, I beat Jolie really hard at ladder ball. <laughs> Hopefully uh, you didn't beat her no, with ladder ball. No, I wasn't, I, I wasn't okay. being violent. I was okay. just, uh, I, I won, I should say. Yay. <laughs> uh, we played some cornhole for a while. That was fun. Uh, There's a lot of other games there that were pretty fun. Um, the standout of the night, blackjack. Okay. Um, so if you ever want to go to Las Vegas, thousand dollars. Yes. Um, if you ever want to go to Vegas, bring Jolie with you. Okay. She's really good at that. She she will win. Okay. She'll win you some money. It was kind of scary. She just kept <laughs> racking things up. She got so you started with a thousand dollars. She didn't tell me that. So like she started with a thousand dollars. She made at least three thousand dollars by the wow. end. Wow. Go Jolie. Yeah. So like I said, if you need anybody to okay. gamble with, she's your person. So all right. So. But it was, it was really okay. fun. Um, I don't know how I feel about not having, like, the official kind of prom thing. Yeah. Like, the... Um, Did you even have a junior prom? Nope. Okay, so... You, it got wow. totally canceled. That got nixed. Okay. Yep. Um, I think, yeah, prom was that usually in May, I think. Usually. Yeah. We got shut down in March. We always and had, like, a winter cotillion in, like, January, and then we also had prom in June, so... Yeah. Around that time, but... that but was a galaxy far away, so... <laughs> But yep, the whole whole thing of prom just got totally scrapped this year. Yeah. Nothing I can do about it. I well, that's I kind of a good just, attitude. About I almost it. just put on my prom dress last night while my family was over. I curled my you hair. You could have worn it here. Hey, I curled my hair for graduation. I was just like, hey, why not? Why I, not? While I'm while I'm feeling glam, why not put it on? Yeah. I didn't because it was really hot though. Because it's you know 97 I, degrees. Yeah, it in was the 97 shade. degrees, and I didn't feel like covering my entire body. I had like a dress that so was down to my knees, and I was like, this is too much touching my legs. Oh wow, yeah, it was really hot. I was it was, it was a little sticky. It was brutal. <laughs> so, what are you going? You know. You grew up in Burlington. You're moving 3,000 miles away. What do you think you're going to miss most about Burlington? Or um, about, you know, anything, you know, about, about, you know, any of the experiences that you had growing up? Definitely the people and the sense of community that we have in Burlington. I've been involved in a lot of, a lot of programs, whether it be some sports programs that I've done, being here at BCAT, other community service things that I've been involved in 
everyone that's is right you won an award for like the most hours over at people helping people yep, that's right um i'm their number one high schooler who's had the mm. most hours i think i'm coming up on 150 here wow <laughs> i'm sure they have food pantries should you exactly. out in california should you desire to you know do some community service oh, i'll be there but. i'll be there um it's everyone is so passionate about what they do here everyone kind of knows exactly what they're interested in and then they run with it and it's really fun to see everyone just gets so excited about everything mm -hmm. like you could talk to jolie about band for hours she loves what she does you could talk to chris about lip dubs and movies and anything like that for hours everyone knows what it is that they really like yeah and okay. everyone wants to get involved in these things and a lot of my other friends all know what they like to do and they all are really passionate about it and they keep getting involved with things and that is one of the things that Burlington does so beautifully. They have a sense of you can do anything you want really. Oh, cool. You can get involved with any of the rec programs, you can get involved with any of the community service stuff. No matter what it is that you're interested you'll in, you'll find something. There's to some do. sort of opportunity to do it and then you'll find other people here that are just as excited about it. It's lovely. Cool. Well, we are just about out of time, and I'm excited because I have a present for you, too. Yeah, very excited. You'll never guess what it is. I couldn't imagine. So, you can, okay, you know, there we're you on our little leashes, but <laughs> you can open it now. Oh. I know it won't be, you, you oh, read that later, read that yeah. later. I wrote a book. Aw. You'll never guess what it is. Oh, yeah, my daughter helped me pick out that bag, too. I love the bag. Stripes are my favorite thing. So, yes, Smith College Very nice. is where I went to college. I love it. And I know it's huge now, but sometimes, you know, when you're just in one of those I miss home move moods, just, you know, put it on, curl up in a little fetal position, and have a cup of hot cocoa. Oh, you know I will. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you know, as I mentioned to Jolie, that will hopefully remind you of me and B-Cat and of course. And home. 100%. And also, if you also decide to come up with a collection of college sweatshirts that can be part of your collection. So, oh, whoa, Dust Bunny, come it back. It does not fit the Dust Bunny. Dust Bunny, come back, no. <laughs> um, so, I actually kind of do have a s collection of sweatshirts started. Not particularly just like these ones. When I was touring California schools, uh -huh. every time I went to a California school, I bought a sweatshirt. Uh, and I thought that was really fun. Cool. But now... I guess I gotta keep rolling. You gotta do get everything exactly. Just, All ooh, right. Well, maybe I should get one from every state. We are out of time. Okay. So I want to thank you again. Congratulate you. Congratulate thank you. Jolie. And I want to thank everyone at home <laughs> for tuning in. And hopefully, the graduate in your life, wherever they're graduating from, whatever grade, please give them your support because they worked really hard under unprecedented circumstances. So we're very proud of them. So. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have a great evening, and I'll see you around town. Good night.